The series starts by introducing Michael Schofield, a unique man who tattoos the detailed layout of a prison onto his skin. One day, after careful planning, he decides to rob a bank. With determination, he forces the manager to open the vault. But when the police arrive, instead of escaping, he surrenders. Because of this, Michael gets a five-year prison sentence for using a gun during the robbery. He asks to serve his time at a prison near his home, leading him to Fox River State Penitentiary, a low-security prison. Veronica, his lawyer and friend, is puzzled by his sudden criminal behavior and his choice of prison. Despite her confusion, Michael enters Fox River and immediately faces hostility from the head guard, Brad Bellick. The prison is extremely dangerous, with inmates frequently killing each other, especially those serving life sentences who have nothing to lose. Michael shares a cell with Sucre, who is counting down his final 16 months before release. Sucre gives Michael a tour of the prison, explaining the different gangs and the vigilant guards in the towers. During the tour, Michael notices a man across the yard Sucre tells him that the man is Lincoln Burroughs, who is scheduled to be executed in a month for killing the vice president's brother. Michael's interest in Lincoln leads Sucre to ask why. Michael then reveals that Lincoln is his brother. In a past conversation, Lincoln had told Michael that he was innocent of the murder. Now, Michael decides to approach John Abruzzi, a powerful mafia leader who controls the prison's work operations. Inmates can earn extra money by working for Abruzzi, but he rules strictly. When Michael expresses his desire to join the prison industry, Abruzzi refuses. As Michael walks away, he leaves an origami crane on the table, a silent message showing his potential value to Abruzzi. Soon after, an officer tells Michael that Warden Henry Pope wants to talk to him. This news worries Sucre because meetings with the warden usually mean serious trouble. When Michael meets Warden Pope, he finds out that the warden knows about his past as a structural engineer and is impressed by his academic record. To Michael's surprise, the warden doesn't need help with prison work. Instead, he asks Michael to help build a model of the Taj Mahal out of toothpicks for his wife. Even though this job would let Michael spend three days a week off the prison yard, he says no. At the same time, Abruzzi gets important information from his friend, Maggio, about an envelope with a photo of Otto Fibonacci. Fibonacci is a mob informant who testified against Abruzzi in Chicago and has been in hiding under witness protection. Maggio also finds an origami bird in the envelope, which makes Abruzzi realize that Michael, who left him a similar origami bird before, knows where Fibonacci is hiding. While talking with Charles Westmoreland, who many think is the famous D.B. Cooper, Michael is interrupted by Abruzzi. Abruzzi demands to know where Fibonacci is. When Michael refuses, they start to fight. Guards quickly stop the fight by firing warning shots into the ground. After the fight, Warden Pope calls Michael and tells him he will spend 90 days in solitary confinement as punishment. Michael offers to build the Taj Mahal model for the Warden in exchange for a lighter sentence. Meanwhile, Michael visits the medical wing regularly for insulin shots, where he is treated by Dr. Sarah, the governor's daughter. She doesn't know that Michael is pretending to be diabetic to get access to the infirmary for his escape plan. As Dr. Sarah starts to doubt Michael's need for insulin, she decides to run tests to check if he really has diabetes. Michael talks to Benjamin C-Note, the prison's go-to guy for drugs, and asks for Pugnac, a substance that makes his blood sugar look high, helping him pretend to be diabetic. C-Note agrees and promises to get the drug later. With his job card for the prison industry secured, Michael tells his brother Lincoln about his bold plan to escape prison before Lincoln's execution. The plan needs money and help from outside. Michael explains that Abruzzi will provide a plane for their escape, and Charles Westmoreland's hidden money will support them after they get out. Lincoln is doubtful, but Michael is confident. He even shows Lincoln the detailed map of the prison tattooed on his body. Later, during a surprise search by the guards, Sucre signals Michael to hide a shank. Unfortunately, Bellick sees Michael with the shank and reports it to Warden Pope. Pope realizes the shank belongs to Sucre, not Michael, so Michael avoids punishment. Sucre is sent to solitary confinement, but Pope stops Bellick from searching their cell further because he values Michael's cooperation. Next, Michael needs a screw from the prison yard. He goes to the yard and starts unscrewing a bleacher with a coin, unaware that the bleacher belongs to Teabag's gang. Teabag, a dangerous inmate with a violent past, confronts Michael and wants him to be his companion. Michael refuses and keeps working. Angry, 
Teabag orders Michael to leave the bleachers. The next day, Michael tries again but is caught by Teabag and his gang. Michael gives up the screw and plans to steal it from Teabag's cell. When Teabag catches him, Michael lies, saying he wants to join the gang. Meanwhile, C-Note sees Michael with Teabag and thinks Michael is part of the gang. Because of this, C-Note refuses to give Michael the drug. That night, a fight breaks out between the white and black inmates. Michael sees Teabag's boyfriend, Maytag, holding the screw and tries to get it. During the fight, a black inmate kills Maytag and runs away. Teabag thinks Michael killed Maytag and swears revenge. The corrections officers quickly order all inmates back to their cells, leaving Michael shocked by witnessing a killing for the first time. The next day, C-Note gives Michael the Pugnac pills after his fight with Maytag. Michael takes the pills and goes to the medical wing, where Sarah tests his blood sugar. Thanks to the Pugnac, his sugar levels are falsely high, making him appear diabetic. Later, Abruzzi and his gang corner Michael in a storage shed, demanding to know where Fibonacci is. Michael refuses to tell them until they are out of prison. Desperate, Abruzzi and his men cut off Michael's two smallest toes on his left foot. But Michael still doesn't reveal anything. Michael is taken to the infirmary, and Sarah suggests an investigation, but Bellic, who is on Abruzzi's side, dismisses it, saying Michael hurt himself with a gardening tool. Michael tells Lincoln he plans to ask Sucre to help dig an escape tunnel. Lincoln warns him not to trust Sucre. To test Sucre's loyalty, Michael hides a fake phone made of soap and tells Sucre to keep it secret. Lincoln tells Bellic that Sucre has a phone. When Bellic searches, Sucre doesn't reveal the fake phone, losing his conjugal visit privileges. Sucre is angry when he finds out the phone is fake and blames Michael. When Sucre learns about the escape plan, he gets even angrier, saying he just wants to finish his sentence and be with his fiancée, Mary Cruz. Sucre asks for a cell transfer to stay away from the escape plan. As a result, Michael gets a new cellmate, Haywire, who was transferred from the psychiatric ward. Meanwhile, Philly Falzone, the new head of the Abruzzi Mafia family, meets with John Abruzzi to find out where Fibonacci is. Falzone is worried about Fibonacci testifying against him. Abruzzi decides to get help from Teabag. However, Abruzzi ends up attacking Teabag to make peace with Michael. Abruzzi agrees to help Michael as long as Michael tells him where Fibonacci is within a month. Michael starts to dig in his cell while Haywire is asleep, but Haywire can't sleep due to his condition. Michael talks to Haywire about escaping, but Haywire suggests telling Officer Bellic instead. Haywire is very interested in Michael's tattoos and wants to see all of them, but Michael refuses. Later, a doctor and an officer give Haywire his medication, which he spits out, saying it makes him feel numb. Haywire becomes more and more obsessed with Michael's tattoos. With A. Bruzzi's help, Michael gets a chemical to control drain roots and then goes to the toxic control center to get masonry cleaner. He puts these chemicals into empty toothpaste tubes. During a visit to the infirmary, when Sarah steps away for a moment, Michael pours the chemicals into the ventilation system, causing a corrosive reaction in the metal. Meanwhile, Mary Cruz tells Sucre that she is pregnant and worries about raising the child alone. Sucre promises her that he will be there for their family when he gets out in 16 months. But the next day, Sucre's friend Hector confesses that he is now romantically involved with Mary Cruz. Feeling betrayed by his friend and fiancé, Sucre's world falls apart, and he decides to join Michael's escape plan again. Michael feels relieved when Sucre recommits to the plan, but they still have to deal with Haywire. Haywire becomes more obsessed with Michael's tattoos, thinking they look like a pathway. When Michael sees Haywire drawing the tattoo pattern, he realizes the danger. To get rid of Haywire, Michael bangs his head against the cell door, making the guards think Haywire attacked him. This gets Haywire removed from the cell. With Sucre back on board, Michael updates him on the escape plan. Sucre creates a distraction by singing loudly, covering the noise as Michael breaks through the weakened wall. Michael successfully makes a hole in the wall and crawls through it for the first time. Meanwhile, Special Agents Kellerman and Hale are on their way to the prison. Kellerman and Hale, who work for someone who wants Lincoln dead, suspect Michael's presence in the prison. They get Michael's transfer order and pressure Warden Pope to comply. Pope hesitates because of his friendship with Michael and the help Michael has given with the Taj Mahal project. But when Kellerman threatens to reveal Pope's secret about his illegitimate son, Pope agrees to transfer Michael. 
When Michael hears about the transfer, he tells Pope he wants to stay at Fox River to support his brother, Lincoln, until his execution. Pope feels sorry for Michael but can't resist the powerful people behind the transfer. With few options left, Michael asks Charles Westmoreland for advice. Westmoreland suggests delaying the transfer by citing a medical condition. Following this advice, Michael writes a letter to Pope, claiming he has sinusitis, which will delay the transfer by a month. In the meantime, Michael carefully carries out his escape plan. Sucre hides their secret tunnel with sheets and uses a mirror to watch for approaching guards. Using his detailed tattoos as a guide, Michael navigates through the crawl space and reaches the roof without being seen. During the cell check, a sharp-eyed officer notices Michael is missing and raises the alarm. From the roof, Michael sees three possible routes, busy English and Percy Roads, and quiet Fitt Street. He decides Fitt Street is the best escape route. When Pope learns Michael is missing, he first checks his office and finds Michael working on the Taj Mahal model. Even though Bellic is still suspicious, Pope tells him not to worry because Michael is supposed to be transferred the next day. What Bellick doesn't know is that Kellerman and Hale had earlier threatened Pope to expose his secret to his wife if he didn't transfer Michael. Scared of the truth coming out, Pope agrees to transfer Michael the next day. As Michael is being prepared for the transfer, Pope unexpectedly stops it, saying Michael has a medical condition. This shows that Pope really cares about the inmates, even though it might get him in trouble. Before Kellerman and Hale can carry out their threat, Pope tells his wife the truth. She already knows and forgives him. Michael needs more time to work on the tunnel, but he keeps getting interrupted by cell checks. He learns from Sucre that the only time without checks is during lockdowns. Michael shuts off the air conditioning, making the prisoners uncomfortable. Teabag starts a fight with a guard, causing a lockdown. With tensions high, chaos breaks out, and the prisoners take over the control room. Teabag unlocks all the cells, giving the rioters full access to the prison. Amid the chaos, Michael and Sucre sneak into the crawl space. Michael explains his plan. Using a light covered with a drawing of a devil, they drill holes in specific spots with an egg beater. This weakens the wall, allowing them to break through. Their escape route involves crawling through a drainage pipe connected to the prison sewage system, leading to the infirmary, which is a key part of their escape plan. Meanwhile, chaos spreads to the infirmary as news of the riot reaches there. In the turmoil, Dr. Sarah faces a dangerous situation when an inmate tries to attack her. Acting quickly in self-defense, she gives the attacker an injection, which gives her time to lock herself in her office. Outside, other prisoners gather with bad intentions, increasing the threat until authorities come in to restore order. Unaware of his daughter's danger, the governor, who is also Sarah's father, calls Warden Pope, asking if she is safe. Not knowing about Sarah's situation, Pope reassures him, thinking that the chaos in A-Wing hasn't affected the infirmary in B-Wing. However, Sarah is fighting for her life in the infirmary. During the riot, Teabag takes Officer Bob as a hostage and torments him. He accidentally finds Michael's cell and discovers the escape route. Before he can tell others, Abruzzi stops him to prevent further trouble. When Michael returns to the cell, he realizes that both Teabag and Officer Bob know about the escape plan. Michael decides not to hurt Bob and makes a deal with him. In exchange for his safety, Bob promises not to tell anyone about the escape route. Later, while watching the control room, Michael sees Dr. Sarah in distress on the CCTV feed from the infirmary. He quickly goes to help her and reaches her just as the prisoners try to break in. Michael guides Sarah into the crawl space, and she asks how he knows the layout. Michael explains that he worked on a prison project to remove mold. Satisfied with his answer, Sarah's suspicions are temporarily eased. Exiting the crawl space, Michael and Sarah share a brief moment that hints at unspoken feelings. However, their connection is interrupted when prisoners find them. Michael steps in to protect Sarah. During the fight, Michael overpowers one inmate while Sarah takes down another with a knee strike. As order is being restored, snipers mistakenly target Michael, thinking he is a threat. Sarah bravely shields Michael from the snipers. When the prisoners catch up, Sarah escapes and Michael ducks, causing the sniper to hit the inmates behind them. Meanwhile, Sucre and Abruzzi drill the holes in the wall, making progress on their escape plan. The governor arrives and finds his daughter unharmed. As authorities regain control, Teabag suggests killing Officer Bob to keep him quiet, but Michael disagrees. 
With law enforcement closing in, Michael lets Bob go. However, Teabag intercepts Bob and fatally stabs him. Charles Westmoreland sees this brutal scene. Michael, Sucre, and Abruzzi plan how to access the old sewer pipe that leads to their escape route through the infirmary. Michael explains they need to start at the storage building halfway across the yard they plan to infiltrate the prison industries team to work there and break through the floor to access the pipe. Their conversation is interrupted by Teabag, who demands to be included in the escape plan. He threatens to expose their plan if they don't involve him, but Michael refuses for now. To reach the storage room, the PI team pretends they have legitimate work there. But when they try to open the door, guards stop them. It turns out the storage room has been turned into a break room for guards, with no inmate access except for Charles, who has a spotless record for three decades. Facing this obstacle, Michael asks Charles to join their escape plan. Charles advises caution and denies being the famous D.B. Cooper. Despite Michael's efforts to link him to the hijacker, Charles insists he was just on a drunken spree during that time. Now faced with the challenge of setting fire to the break room, the team comes up with a plan to get assigned to work there. Sucre suggests tampering with the coffee machine by adding rubber cement, which would cause it to malfunction and start a fire. However, they need someone on the inside to carry out the task. Later, Michael finds Charles's missing cat during a lockdown, earning Charles's gratitude. Despite this, when Michael asks Charles for help in setting fire to the break room, Charles firmly declines, saying he can't join the escape plan. Charles has a good relationship with Bellic, due to his good behavior. This puts him in a tough spot when Bellic asks him about Bob's death, as Charles was near the crime scene. Although Charles knows who the killer is, he hesitates to tell Bellic, fearing the consequences. His reluctance grows when he finds his cat dead, likely killed because Bellic was angry at his silence. Furious, Charles decides to get revenge by helping Michael and his crew. He starts a fire, making it look like Bellic did it, turning the tables on his former ally. Meanwhile, Teabag's cellmate Seth tells Bellic about Bob's murderer, but it's all part of Teabag's plan. Teabag frames Seth by hiding a picture of Bob's daughter under Seth's bed. Seth gets wrongly arrested, and Teabag escapes suspicion. Teabag also assaults Seth, who tries to get help from Michael. However, Teabag's threats force Michael to stay out of it. Feeling helpless and ignored, Seth tragically takes his own life, leaving Michael feeling guilty for not being able to help. As planned, the prison industries team, including Teabag, is called to fix the break room. With Sucre keeping watch at the door, the team begins breaking the floor to access the sewage system. They discreetly dispose of the concrete pieces in the yard, which catches the attention of C-Note. He becomes curious about where these pieces are coming from. With the arrival of new inmates like David, also known as Tweener, tensions rise within the prison. Tweener feels rejected by both the black and white inmates, leaving him isolated. Teabag sees an opportunity and tries to intimidate Tweener into becoming his ally. However, Tweener senses Teabag's bad intentions and stands his ground, warning Teabag to stay away. Despite his bravery, Tweener remains cautious of the dangers around him. Michael sees the confrontation and steps in, advising Teabag to leave Tweener alone. But Teabag is not easily deterred. The next day, while the prison industry's PI team starts their work, Michael confronts Teabag. He delivers a firm warning and even hits Teabag with a hammer, emphasizing the consequences of messing with Tweener or any other inmate. This time, Michael is not afraid of Teabag revealing their escape plan because he knows Teabag has his own reasons to keep it secret. Seeing Michael's seriousness, Teabag backs off. Abruzzi's contact, Falzone, has stopped paying Bellic. When Abruzzi hears this, he reassures Bellic that he will handle the money. However, since Falzone controls all the money, Bellic sees Abruzzi as powerless. Falzone distances himself from Abruzzi and asks Gus Fiorello to find Fibonacci. This move puts Abruzzi out of control, and Gus Fiorello takes over the prison industries. Despite Michael's efforts to hide the hole, the new PI team can't find it. With no other choice, Michael agrees to tell Falzone where Fibonacci is but demands $200 million in return. Abruzzi then reveals that Lincoln's lawyer, Veronica, is being watched. If Michael refuses, Veronica's safety is at risk. With no other option, Michael gives Fibonacci's location. However, it's a trap, and the police arrest Falzone and his crew for gun charges and parole violations. Michael planned this with Nika's help, 
whose single phone call was key in their capture. Abruzzi celebrates Falzone's downfall, happy to be free of his threats. With Bellic's bribes settled, Abruzzi regains control of the prison industry workers. The team resumes their digging, not knowing a new challenge is coming. C-Note tells Bellic that Abruzzi needs a new worker in the PI. When Abruzzi declines, C-Note stands over the hole, making it clear he knows about the escape plan and wants in. Just like that, they have another member on board. Later, a guard tells Michael he has a visitor, his wife, Nika. Michael had married her two days before the heist as part of their plan. During their private meeting, Nika gives Michael a credit card as he had requested. After she leaves, Sarah sees them kiss and is clearly affected by learning Michael is married. Meanwhile, Bellic feels he has seen Nika before but can't remember where. Michael modifies the credit card into a key card. He remembers accessing the prison security manual and an encoder. Using this knowledge, he encodes the card with the master key code to the prison storeroom. At night, he sneaks out and uses the card to enter the room and retrieve his belongings, including a recorder, although his gold watch is missing. The next day, Michael talks to Charles about inmates' belongings disappearing. Charles confirms it's common and Officer Geary is known to be the main thief. Michael sees his missing watch on Geary's wrist and asks Tweener to get it back in exchange for a favor at the prison industries. Meanwhile, Warden Pope gives Westmoreland terrible news. His daughter has terminal esophageal cancer and only a few weeks left to live. Despite Westmoreland's pleas, the Department of Corrections won't release him, fearing he might escape again. They only offer extensions for funerals. This heartbreaking news deeply affects Westmoreland and motivates him to join the escape plan to be with his daughter during her final moments. When Westmoreland shares his plan with Michael, Michael is skeptical. He stresses that everyone must contribute to the escape. In response, Westmoreland reveals his wealth and admits he is D.B. Cooper, the famous hijacker who vanished with $1.5 million. To convince Michael, he shows a unique $100 bill with the same serial number as the stolen money. After retrieving his watch, Michael cleverly attaches it to his recorder and hides the device in the grass near the infirmary. His goal is to record the guards' patrol times around the infirmary. The next day, Sarah talks to Michael, asking about his marital status. Michael hints that his marriage is not typical, but Sarah sets boundaries, saying their relationship will stay professional. Michael and Sucre listen to the playback from the hidden recorder. They hear the faint jingle of the guard's keys, learning that the guards patrol every 18 minutes. Michael calculates the time they have, and tells Lincoln they only have an 18-minute window to climb the prison wall. He breaks down the plan. It will take 5 minutes to remove the infirmary window bars, leaving 13 minutes to cross the wire and get over the wall. Since each member needs 2 minutes to cross, it's clear they can't all make it in time, creating a problem. C-Note overhears their conversation and tells the rest of the team. Most agree that T-Bag should be left out, but T-Bag has a backup plan. He has informed his cousin about the escape and set a specific time for checking in. If T-Bag doesn't contact his cousin on time, his cousin will alert the warden. Meanwhile, Bellic struggles to remember where he has seen Nika before. When he recognizes her from a photo, he confronts her and demands answers about Michael's request in exchange for a green card. Nika reluctantly admits she gave Michael a credit card because he forced her to. In the midst of the chaos, Bellic confronts Michael about Nika and the credit card, but finds nothing. Undeterred, Bellic continues to insult Michael's wife until Sarah steps in and stops him. Later, Michael tries to explain his marriage to Sarah, but she seems uninterested, showing a growing distance between them. Meanwhile, C-Note tells Sucre that they might not be important to the escape plan, making them worry about being left out. Feeling left out, C-Note considers trying to escape on his own. At the same time, T-Bag tries to convince D.B. Cooper, also known as Westmoreland, to quit the plan, but Westmoreland refuses. To get rid of T-Bag, Abruzzi uses his mob connections to kidnap T-Bag's cousin. Unfortunately, the plan goes wrong, and T-Bag's cousin and his young son are killed. Filled with guilt and haunted by visions of his dead child, Abruzzi seeks forgiveness through confession, desperately looking for redemption. When T-Bag learns about the deaths of his cousin and nephew, he is devastated. Abruzzi, who had previously spared T-Bag's life, warns him to stay away from the escape plan. Despite T-Bag's tearful promises, he retaliates by slashing Abruzzi's throat with a razor blade, 
furious over his family's death. Meanwhile, the team explores the sewer pipe under the hole they dug, but their progress stops when Geary arrives to check the break room. With Michael still underground, Lincoln fights Geary, leading to Lincoln being sent to solitary confinement for 90 days. Michael comes out of the pipe and learns about Lincoln's situation, while Abruzzi is taken to the hospital in critical condition. With Lincoln in solitary, the remaining five inmates meet to plan their next move. Some suggest escaping immediately, but Michael wants to wait. Determined not to leave Lincoln behind, Michael reveals a hidden plan. He cuts his arm to get a black pill he hid before entering the prison. He puts the pill and a note in a crucifix necklace and asks the prison priest to give it to Lincoln with the message, Eat 8 past 10. As the rest of the team retreats to the break room to begin their investigation, Michael subtly disrupts things by tampering with a water pipe, causing a flood. An authority figure quickly intervenes, ordering the crew to fix the problem immediately, even if it means working late into the night. This unexpected event fits perfectly with the team's plan, as they need a quiet night for their secret operation. At precisely 8 past 10, Lincoln takes the pill Michael gave him and quickly falls unconscious, leading to his swift transport to the infirmary. Meanwhile, the remaining team members sneak through the pipes, arriving at the maintenance room directly under the infirmary. The metal has corroded as expected, thanks to Michael's earlier actions. However, their plan hits a snag when Michael finds that the corroded pipe has been replaced with a strong 12-inch metal conduit. Despite their best efforts, they can't remove it. This leaves Michael and Lincoln frustrated. Michael reluctantly tells the team about their failed escape, which angers T-Back. Meanwhile, Sarah returns to her office and finds Lincoln near the ventilation shaft, out of disguise. When she questions him, Lincoln weakly explains that he felt nauseous and left his bed quickly. Just as the team is about to leave the maintenance room, a police officer enters and notices a rod on the floor. The team quickly hides, and luckily, the officer doesn't find anything and leaves. Feeling defeated, the team leaves the maintenance room. Bellick, finishing his shift, notices the untouched sheetrock near the break room. Suspicious, he tries to get in, but the door is locked from the inside by the team, except for D.B. Cooper. Upon entering the room, Bellick confronts the team, demanding an explanation for the unfinished work. The team gives a weak excuse about not being able to fix the mold overnight. Angry, Bellick insults them and calls a guard to take them back to their cells. During a late count, Bellick realizes one member is missing and goes back, finding Westmoreland seemingly tying his shoelaces. Without any tolerance, Bellick orders the team back to their cells, ending their brief taste of freedom. Sue Cray comforts Michael, telling him not to worry and assuring him that Lincoln will appreciate his dedication. As the final 24 hours before Lincoln's execution approach, the media frenzy grows, focusing on the alleged killer of the vice president's brother. With few options left, Michael asks Sarah to speak to her father on Lincoln's behalf. Sarah, while understanding Michael's situation, explains that she and her father have a strained relationship, making her intervention unlikely to be effective. Separately, D.B. Cooper tells Michael a story from 10 years ago about a faulty electric chair that delayed an inmate's execution for three weeks. This story gives Michael an idea for a possible delay for Lincoln. Overhearing this, Tweener listens carefully. Meanwhile, Michael uses food to attract a rat and creates a makeshift device to sabotage the electric chair. Unbeknownst to Michael, Bellick has already enlisted Tweener to keep a close eye on him. When Tweener tells Bellick about Michael's plan to interfere with the electric chair, Bellick investigates and discovers the malfunction. They find a rat inside the electric board. Instead of filing a report, Bellick decides to fix it quickly by replacing the fuse and keeping it quiet. Later, Bellick calls Michael to his cell for a final visit with Lincoln. Meanwhile, Dr. Sarah pleads with her father, the governor, to reconsider Lincoln's case. Although he is initially hesitant, she gives him the file and urges him to read it. Lincoln and Michael, in a somber mood, play a game of gin and share blueberry pancakes, which Lincoln requested for his last meal. Their time is cut short when Veronica arrives, having tried everything to stop the execution. Despite her emotional plea for clemency, Lincoln is taken to the execution chamber. A brief moment of hope arises when an officer informs them of a call from the governor to Warden Pope. However, the call only confirms the execution will proceed as planned. As Lincoln is strapped into the chair, he sees a familiar elderly man near Michael, which momentarily surprises him. Suddenly, 
the curtains close, hinting at something unexpected. Moments later, Hope tells Michael and Veronica that the judge has granted a two-week reprieve. Still in shock, Lincoln tells Michael he saw their father in the execution chamber. It turns out that autopsy files mysteriously appeared in the judge's office, showing that Terence Stedman, the victim, was not who he seemed. Two conflicting autopsy reports were submitted, one showing a healthy appendix and the other indicating the person had undergone an appendectomy. With the new two-week reprieve, Michael adjusts his escape plan and gathers the team to explore the psych ward. They find that the psych ward shares an underground conduit with the infirmary, which could be a possible escape route. However, there's a big challenge. They can reach a hole in the break room leading to a grate halfway through, but the rest of the distance above ground is risky due to detection from the nearby towers, which could be mistaken for a suicide attempt. Michael tells Sucre about his plan to check the pipes under the psych ward. Sucre suggests using his cousin Monch, who works in the laundry department, to get a guard uniform for Michael, helping him move around unnoticed. When the PI team is back in the break room, they notice concrete dust seeping from a hidden patch of the wall. Bellic walks in, and C-Note quickly covers the breach with his foot. Bellic assigns a task to D.B. Cooper, who uses his leg to hide the hole. Despite their efforts, concrete spills onto the floor. Outside, officers engage Teabag in a trivia quiz. The team quickly cleans up the concrete, gaining valuable time. Teabag answers the quiz correctly, distracting the officer and saving their secret work. At night, Michael navigates through the sewage pipe and reaches the final stretch above ground. Wearing the guard uniform, he moves inconspicuously, blending in with the environment. He enters the psych ward, pretending to need the restroom. The attendant, unfamiliar with blue officers, lets him pass without suspicion. In the basement, Michael finds another grate leading to the sewage system. On his way back, an officer unexpectedly checks the maintenance area, forcing Michael to hide and accidentally burn himself on a hot water pipe, damaging the uniform. Monch, despite his worries, covers for Michael by saying the damage was due to an ironing accident. Michael's injury is treated, but he keeps the real cause a secret. The burn complicates things by destroying a crucial part of Michael's tattoo that shows the escape route from the psych ward to the infirmary. With time running out, Michael plans to cover the hole in the break room with plywood and fast-setting concrete before a professional crew arrives to install carpet. Their efforts are interrupted by Bellic, who brings Tweener as an informant, slowing them down. They quickly send Tweener to clean paintbrushes, buying them some time. As Tweener leaves, he tries to eavesdrop on their conversation, but learns nothing. An officer then interrupts, ordering the inmates to help in the yard, forcing them to leave the hole unfinished. Meanwhile, Sarah finds a burnt piece of a guard's uniform with Michael's burn, making her suspicious. She tells Warden Pope, who calls Michael for questioning. When Michael remains silent, he is sent to solitary confinement, joining Lincoln. The team still needs to fix the hole in the break room. They decide Sucre should use the hidden opening behind the toilet to access the break room and fix the hole. They worry about how Sucre will get back, but suggest he re-enter the sewage pipe through the yard grate. Teabag makes a deal with a crow stressor to get clothes for Sucre to leave undetected. At night, Sucre navigates the sewage system, reaches the break room, and patches the hole with cement. However, he is caught on his way back. Despite Sucre's protests, Bellic demands an explanation. Bellic finds panties hidden around Sucre's ankle. Sucre quickly makes up a story, saying they belong to his girlfriend and explaining he planned a secret meeting under the bleachers after yard time. This story convinces Bellic, who doesn't press further but sends Sucre to solitary confinement, joining Lincoln and Michael. The next day, Tweener overhears the group's discussion about the upcoming carpet installation and informs Bellic. Bellic investigates under the break room floor, but thanks to Sucre's careful work, he finds no evidence of the hole. Angry at Tweener for the false tip, Bellic assigns him a new cellmate, Avocado, who has bad intentions similar to Teabag's. Meanwhile, Michael, in solitary confinement, deals with emotional distress, his fists bruised from hitting the walls. Concerned, Sarah arranges for his transfer to the psych ward. After Sarah leaves, Michael reveals that his distressed behavior was just an act to get a chance to talk to Haywire. He hopes Haywire remembers his tattoos since he sketched them before. Michael asks Haywire to recall the tattoo on his back, but Haywire doesn't remember. In the prison cells, 
Captain Bellick and Geary think about auctioning off Michael and Sucre's old cell. During an inspection, a potential buyer points out a leaking toilet, and Geary promises it will be fixed within 24 hours. Teabag hears this conversation and warns the others. The threat of a plumber finding their secret hole prompts C-Note to make Geary a tempting offer, double the amount from the other buyer. The plan depends on getting money from C-Note's connections outside the prison, mostly his black friends. However, without visiting hours, they must rely on support from other black inmates. When C-Note asks his friends for help, they refuse, pointing out his association with the PI crew, especially the white supremacist Teabag. Angry, C-Note starts a fight, which leaves him injured and without the money he needs. While Michael tries to help Haywire remember their past interactions, Teabag suggests a risky plan, entering a high-stakes card game in the kitchen to raise money for buying the cell. Using the money provided by D.B. Cooper, they gamble everything. Against the odds, C-Note wins and gives the agreed $500 to Geary. However, Geary breaks the deal and demands another $200. With no other option, C-Note convinces D.B. Cooper to give up his watch. Geary accepts the watch as payment but reveals he has already sold the cell for $700. Meanwhile, Michael's attempts to get information from Haywire are unsuccessful. However, when a nurse gives Haywire his pills, Michael sees an opportunity. He takes Haywire to a private room and makes him vomit the pills by triggering his gag reflex. Michael hopes this will help Haywire remember their previous discussions about the pills and the prison layout. Miraculously, Michael's efforts pay off as Haywire remembers the missing pathway. However, along with these memories comes the bitter recollection of how Michael got him kicked out of the cell. Angry and resentful, Haywire confronts Michael and demands to know about the escape plan, threatening to tell the authorities. Under pressure, Michael reveals the escape details, mentioning that it starts from the psych ward basement. Reluctantly, Haywire gives Michael his sketch. That night, Haywire takes one of his copies of the tattoo and heads toward the basement, but sets off the alarm and is quickly subdued by officers with tasers. Once again, Michael's cleverness saves him. Later, Warden Pope questions Michael about the burn on his back. Michael strategically blames Officer Geary, claiming he extorts inmates. This accusation is part of a plan orchestrated by Sucre and C-Note which Munch relayed to Michael in exchange for his help with the escape. Munch had accidentally burned Geary's uniform while ironing, and D.B. Cooper secretly placed the uniform in Geary's locker. When Warden Pope hears about Geary's involvement, he searches Geary's locker and finds the bribe money from C-Note, D.B. Cooper's watch, and the burnt uniform. The scorched uniform links Geary to the fragment found in Michael's wound, leading to Geary's immediate termination from his job. Meanwhile, Avocado continues to torment Tweener making him feel completely helpless. Tweener, overwhelmed with emotion, asks Michael for help again. He pleads with Michael to deal with Avocado if he wants any further assistance. Tweener shares how he ended up in prison for stealing a baseball card, which turned out to be worth $300,000. Despite Tweener's desperate plea, Michael refuses to use violence against Avocado. Taking matters into his own hands, Tweener confronts Avocado in their cell. He takes a razor blade hidden under the mattress and castrates Avocado. Meanwhile, Michael and Sucre return from solitary confinement in the psych ward. Michael tells the team that the map is complete and explains their next step, entering the infirmary through the pipes under the psych ward. They need a key to get into the doctor's office. While planning, they see Abruzzi coming off the bus. He is back after recovering from the severe injury teabag cost. Abruzzi seems changed claiming he found religion after his near-death experience. Despite fears of Abruzzi wanting revenge, Teabag plans to kill him. C-Note reminds Teabag that Abruzzi is their best hope for escaping. In a surprising turn, Abruzzi talks to Michael about religion and forgives Teabag for trying to kill him. Michael worries about Avocado retaliating against Tweener after the castration incident. To keep Tweener safe, Michael includes him in the escape plan. However, Tweener betrays them by telling Bellick about the escape plan. Bellick quickly goes to the break room, rips up the carpet, and starts breaking the floor, finding the hidden hole. As he is about to leave, D.B. Cooper hits him with a shovel, leading to a fight. Cooper knocks Bellick out, ties him up, and leaves him in the sewage pipe. Michael hears from Cooper and tells the team to get ready for the escape. As tension rises, officers start looking for Bellick. Despite doubts about Tweener's loyalty, Michael decides to keep him in the plan, 
not wanting to lose another team member. While Teabag collects leftover broccoli from other inmates to spread on his bed to hide his scent from the dogs during the escape, Abruzzi uses fertilizer to change his own scent. In the infirmary, Sarah confronts Michael about a missing item, suspecting his involvement. Michael admits to taking the keys to the doctor's office, helped by Nika's secret meetings with Sarah. When Sarah asks about his intentions, Michael finally tells her his plan to free his brother from prison. Sarah warns him not to share more details. Michael asks Sarah not to lock the door that night because of alarm contacts on the glass. Sarah, doubting his sincerity, questions his romantic gestures. Michael admits that while his feelings started as part of the plan, they have since become genuine. Sarah's disbelief hurts Michael, and she leaves without saying anything. Later, Sarah confronts her father at a restaurant, asking about Lincoln's case. Her father admits he didn't review Lincoln's file, leaving Sarah upset and questioning the government's role in Lincoln's execution. Meanwhile, the Taj Mahal model is damaged when its dome collapses during transfer. Pope calls Michael, who admits to sabotaging the support structure. Tensions rise as Michael holds a knife to Pope's throat, forcing him to order Lincoln's transfer to the infirmary for tests. After Pope complies, Michael knocks him out and returns to his cell, where Sucre is already worried about the situation. During the break, as cell doors open, the crew members approach Michael's cell one by one. They have bleached their jumpsuits white using hydrogen peroxide. While in the crawl space, Bellic removes the tape from his mouth and screams, attracting the guard's attention. Teabag quickly covers Bellic's mouth to silence him. Once the guards leave, they move toward the psych ward, all dressed in white jumpsuits. Disguised as patients, they enter the psych ward. Michael, dressed as an officer, keeps Abruzzi quiet. When an attendant notices Abruzzi, Michael sedates them, allowing the crew to continue to the infirmary through the sewage pipe. At the infirmary, they incapacitate the officer watching Lincoln and go to the doctor's office. With Sarah's help, they find the door isn't alarmed, making it easy to enter. They use a fire hose as a rope to remove the window grate. However, the elevator doesn't work properly. In a quick decision, Tweener steps into the elevator and activates it, causing the grate to come loose. Despite this problem, they continue with the escape plan. Their progress is interrupted when Haywire appears with a CO radio. Despite Michael's efforts to calm him, Haywire insists on joining the escape, threatening to call the guards if he isn't included. Reluctantly, they let Haywire join the escape plan. As the others begin climbing the wire to reach the other side of the wall, D.B. Cooper suddenly collapses. He was wounded by a piece of glass while restraining Bellic. Michael and C-Note rush to help Cooper, who asks Michael to promise to look after his daughter once they're free. Michael agrees. Cooper then reveals that the real amount of money he escaped with was not $1.5 million but $5 million, which the government had lied about to the media. Meanwhile, Pope's secretary becomes worried when she can't find the officer. Their concern grows when they find him tied up in a cupboard. An alarm is raised, and security tightens. Amid the chaos, the crew manages to flee, except for Monch. The wire snaps under his weight, and he falls back into the prison. Caught by the officers, Monch reveals all the details of the escape plan during questioning. In A-Wing, the inmates celebrate Michael and the PI crew's escape. Guards pull Bellic from the hole, and he demands his shotgun. Confronting a group of guards around Warden Pope, Bellic ignores the warden's commands over a bullhorn. Meanwhile, police mobilize, and the eight convicts head into the forest. They find a car left by C-Note's brother-in-law. With everyone on board, they tell Haywire to get the keys from a nearby dustbin. While Haywire is distracted, Abruzzi secretly gives the car keys to Michael, signaling they plan to leave Haywire behind. The crew heads to the runway. As Lincoln drives, Abruzzi tries to kick Teabag out of the group. But Teabag has already handcuffed himself to Michael. Before Abruzzi can react, Teabag cuffs himself to Michael's wrist. Teabag, holding the key in his mouth, swallows it before anyone can stop him. Now, they're stuck with him. Killing him isn't an option, as Michael would have to drag his body all the way to the runway. When the car gets stuck in mud, they take shelter in a nearby shed. There, Lincoln grabs Teabag, and Sucre tries to cut the cuffs, but fails. Abruzzi then uses an axe to cut off Teabag's hand, getting his revenge. Continuing to the runway, they find the plane has already left due to the approaching police. The five remaining fugitives run into a nearby field with the police close behind. 
Teabag runs through the forest, holding his severed hand. Tweener, ordered by Michael to leave after his betrayal, hides in a horse trailer to avoid capture. Haywire, on his own journey, steals a girl's bicycle and rides off to an unknown destination. So the moral of the story is, always carry a backup plan for your backup plan, and remember, never trust a guy named Teabag with your escape route or your handcuffs.